this is Jeroen of the Dutch band Isagrim, and you are listening to the Bloodshed with the Vampire on Metal Messiah Radio International. Hi Jeroen, it's a great pleasure to have you back here on the Bloodshed with the Vampire on Metal Messiah Radio International. How are you doing, man? <laughs> Very good, it's so good to have you back, man. It's awesome to hear your voice again, man. <laughs> okay, for those who don't know, this extreme metal band formed in 1996 in the beautiful city of Zutphen, Gelderland, the Netherlands, and delivers a killer death trash metal. Is a Grim is Marlou's vocals, bass, Jeroen guitars, Bart guitars, and Evo drums. It's always a pleasure to spend time with you and to with the band when we meet on the road, Jeroen. As far as I can remember, I saw you last live in concert at the Stonehenge Festival, that's in Steenweg, that was in 2016. Also, I remember meeting you at the Into the Grave Festival in Leeuwarden, that's back in 2016 as well. Last year, 2017, I couldn't catch any shows in the Netherlands since I was really busy on the road in Slovenia, in Germany, in uh, Czech Republic, all those places. But you know, it's always so fun, so great to spend time with you. And I must say I had a hell of a great time at Boat Festival. I was very happy to share some times with you guys, Marlouz, Bart, you, Evo. I want to thank you guys very much for have signed out of the CD, Fairy Man sent uh, for me at the time. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> great introduction, man. Great introduction. <laughs> Jeroen, at the same time, what I'm most enjoying about Easy Gleam is that you guys always spend so many times, you know, go over and over all these festivals. Whether you play or not, the band is there. That's a type of chemistry you guys have been using for a long time. Always there in the crowd, saluting, drinking with the fans, with the friends. And that's, I think, that's what people love more about Easy Gleam. My question is, does it matter how famous you guys are at some point of time of your career? You will always keep enjoying and sharing your times so your sex with the fans yeah well you, you know how we are you already said it that we always enjoy hanging out with our fans and, and friends and meeting new people and getting drunk after the show after the show <laughs> before the show because we have to play a show and uh, we always grab some beers after the show and yeah it's, it's, it's lovely to hang out with new people and, and having fun basically and I think that was one of the things I said in a previous interview with you that is all about having fun we're we're very serious when it comes to writing music and performing but i will quit the band when it doesn't make any fun anymore i mean that's the most important part of, of isagrim for me and i know for the rest of the band it also means the same so and that's why we have a very long and solid and stable time with the four of us we're all heading the same direction with this band so uh, yeah and and fans are the most important thing for us so yeah some uh, musicians are bands tend to part away from the fans when they become famous that's why i want to bring oh, yeah. this question up front but we, we will never get famous so <laughs> <laughs> no no that's just kidding i'm just kidding no we're not a not a typical stay in the backstage band yeah we will get our free beers from backstage and then we are running to the venue again and and hang out with the with the crowd i mean that's that's awesome Jerome, talking about uh, famous and success, I'm very happy to say that I had a great opportunity to follow the band's career, evolution and success very closely. And uh, this is especially for new fans or fans that have never heard my older interviews with you, Jerome. But I've spent so many time with the band uh, since the early stages of the band. And I follow the band shows all around Holland and also have enjoyed the album that the band has released so far. Some, thank yes, thank you, you're very welcome. To yeah. say some guidelines for uh, genocide in 2002, 2008, a tribute to totalitarianism and code of consequences. Uh, in 2011, Congress of Insane, 2013, the last one, The Ferris Man, and in 2006, and not to forget the EPs, New World All in 2005, and Point of No Return in 2009, and I must mention 
the band has a solid lineup, as you just said. Jeroen, if uh, we want to have a look back when the band was formed, we talk about over more than 20 years back. Could you? <laughs> That's a long time. Yeah. Could you, could you describe how easy or how hard was it for you to be the one responsible for the band's entire career evolution and success? Oh wow, well first of all I'm not the only one responsible for the band's entire career. I mean, we always do it with the four of us and okay I do the interviews and, and some business stuff but everyone in Easy Grim has their the same share and influence on the next step in the band so it's not entirely to me. No, that's not the thing with our band so I wanted to know how hard it was. Yeah, well when you first start a band it's like 20 years ago, Jesus, <laughs> that's a long time ago. Go, man. The music was totally different. We had a keyboard player and it was like doom, doom kind of stuff. And now with this lineup, which we have for like eight or nine years already, it's, well, yeah, a band has to undergo a certain amount of evolution. It's like having fun in a band, but you also have to, yeah, your career has to go upwards. Otherwise, you have to stop. So the four of us are really hardworking guys and a girl, of course. And... Mm -hmm. It's almost coming naturally. We still haven't played really big festivals, you know, like uh, like the Wacken things and the Graspop things. But yeah, that's kind of part of the business. I'm satisfied with that, that we haven't played there uh, already. But we've played tons of superb shows. And yeah. we did <laughs> the 70,000 tons of metal in Miami. And we've been on European tours and stuff like that. So I think the career so far is, is very good for a Dutch band. And I mean, we don't make a living with this band. So yeah, it, it's a perfect combination of a hobby and also a very professional attitude. I think that's the, the baseline of the, of our career and what we want to achieve with the band. So yeah. I think you must give credit to all the musicians who played in this band. I'm talking about since the first release, when the bands first started, I've seen it at the evolution of the band that's just part of history or part of life that you have to evolve like that Jeroen but it's good if you have to look back and you see at that time that's where I wanted to be and give credit to the older uh, musician as well oh absolutely absolutely that's that's what I said and and, and we now have a uh, like nine eight or nine years a stable uh, lineup but yeah all the old members have also had their fair share in in the evolution uh, absolutely I mean I don't want to forget about them but that's that's absolutely a good point of view so thank you for all the old band members <laughs> <laughs> yeah sure because I really enjoy all those albums that these guys has played on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm still very proud of everything we did. It's like a capture of the, the moment in time. And uh, that was the best things we could do back then. And Or we had different influences. But it, it's all the, all the albums. I am very proud of them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I hope my next question will make you laugh or not cry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bring it on, man. Bring it on. I'm sick and tired. You know, all the time I have to read this on the medias and things. Let me ask you this time: Is it true you don't like Easy Grim to be called to be compared as a female-fronted band? Oh, boo! boo. <laughs> <laughs> It's always the same thing. Yeah, we have uh, women on vocals, but I always associate female-fronted metal with something else that, that we are uh, standing for. We're not like an, with Intentation or... Yeah, many of them, yes. Stuff, yeah, you know, and it's, it's like a certain stigma that is connected to the, the term female-fronted. Yeah, sure, we have a female on vocals. And, <laughs> and very talented call, uh, and beautiful, man. Yeah, 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 thank you. <laughs> You could you could call any other band a mill from that band. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty stupid stigma. But when we read it in in interviews or in in reviews, we're we're all okay with it. We've bashed too long against this stigma, and and there are a lot of new bands with women on vocals that are uh, grunting. When we started in in '96, weren't that many bands with these kind of vocals that the women produced, and yeah. it's now more more of a common standard. I see a lot of new bands also in Holland that have uh, a female on vocals that that all that sings like uh, Malus so it's it's not it's not that special anymore so yeah uh, you yeah. can mention creeper you toured with creeper as well 
Brita. Yeah, exactly. A uh, gripper. I've got now a band in Holland that's called Sisters of Suffocation. That yeah, is that's right. Yeah. Great. And and you see it in in uh, Germany. All, yeah, gripper is all, but they they quit. They, they quit. Forever. Yeah, but she will continue uh, with critical mass. Yeah, absolutely. I heard some things about that. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, that's uh, that's that's it's not that that special anymore. Like I mentioned, so uh, we won't we won't fight you uh, when you call us female from it. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to buy me a beer next time. Okay? <laughs> sure. <laughs> the Freddy Man's End, which drew a possibly roaring press response worldwide and saw the band touring and sharing stage with the likes as Flotsam and Jotsam, Creator, Annihilator, Onslaught, Creeper and more. We are still hearing these great tunes like Time to Run, White Walls, The Evil Within, Reclaim My Identity, Loss in Tranquility and many more. Uh, Jeroen, I believe so far the Freddy Man ends for sure the best effort the band has released so far. Could you share with us what have this release mean for you and the band for the record label as well and how has the road trips and shared stages with all of these great bands I just mentioned been? Oh wow, it's like two years ago already so a lot happened. Yeah, it, it was a, a turning point again in our career like you early mentioned uh, the evolution and things like that. Well, first of all, the artwork was really great, you know, the hand-painted artwork and uh, Listenable to pick that artist to draw or paint the cover for the Ferryman's Ant. So that was pretty uh, awesome and pretty yeah. new for us. Yeah. And it was also immediately released on the final. So it was also uh, pretty cool. And all the reviews and interviews, and they were really, really, really great. Well, yeah, we didn't expect that much attention, but it was really awesome. I mean, you worked really hard on writing. You've been writing like a year and a half on that <laughs> album, and it was finally released. And yeah. Yeah, it's like getting a baby and uh, you hope that everybody likes it, likes your baby. Yeah. And yeah, well, it, it was. We did a European tour with Flotsam and we did a shitload of uh, weekend shows. So yeah, it was a pretty busy two years promoting that album. And well, yeah, now it's uh, time to promote the EP. So yeah, let's see how that will work out. <laughs> But uh, you had a lot of fun on the road. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We always have fun <laughs> on the road. I mean, <laughs> that's what, what it's all about about in our band being on the road and, and playing live yeah that's that's what we love so yeah
Do you believe that uh, this album, The Ferryman's End, has put you on a higher level? I think so, yeah. When you see where we played after the... Re yeah, we've played, I don't know exactly all the places we've been. It was... Oh yeah, we, for instance, we did a, a small a headliner tour through Spain. We did six shows in a row through mm -hmm. Spain, so that was really, really special. We did some very cool festivals. And so, yeah, it's, it, you can see that after the release of each album you get a certain amount of attention and attention is picked up by venues and bookers yeah you get that snowball effect of more requests to play somewhere so that's uh, yeah so that's that was really awesome i was so happy when i saw you guys play and perform the, the music of this uh, album at the time a very brand new album it was like uh, mm -hmm. i saw you guys in june uh, july and the album was out just a couple couple months yeah yeah Oh, that was a Stonehenge, I think, or yeah, Stonehenge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was one <laughs> of the one of the one of awesome festivals where we played. I mean, several thousand people. It was awesome. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Dutch Dead Trash are released their new, brand new EP entitled Beheaded by Trust that was on March 23rd, 2018. Independently, I must still congratulate you, Jeroen, for this great Thanks. release. If you may uh, give me this opportunity, I will announce the four uh, songs on this EP. Okay, go ahead, man. Okay, uh, tracking list is as follows. Uh, Beheaded by Trust, Stain in the Bloodline, Retro Mart site and warmonger too this brand new ep is a huge step forward dodge that treasures easy green the songwriting was taken to a whole new level marlou's deliver her most brutal vocals yet together with the gentleman lifted their sound to much higher level and to it beheaded by trust easy green are bound to set international stages of flame once again Jerome, could you present us beheaded by trust when we we say the songwriting has been taken to a whole new level what do you really mean uh, with that expression what's so different compared to the older materials what are the lyrics of this new EP talking about oh wow okay first of all the lyrics well Malus always take care of all the lyrics so I cannot tell you a lot about them uh, yeah well it's just a, a logical continuation on the previous albums where it's more or less about all the strange things happening around us that is she's often wondering about the cruelness in mankind in general I mean, okay um, there are a lot of strange things happening around <laughs> us and the code of consequences and ferryman's and had a like pretty uh, obvious red line across all the lyrics the main theme and for this ep yeah she didn't had the urge to write a concept album for just four songs so there are basically four independent songs that are dealing with the, the harshness and mankind i mean nothing more nothing less <laughs> oh yeah you asked me about the songwriting yeah because i can see all the promos when you mentioned that the song her writing was taken to a whole new level and my yeah. question was what's about that i mean what's yeah, do you yeah. believe that the songwriting has become better or yeah no, we, we took a different approach it's always with us that part the other guitar player mm -hmm. is responsible for uh, 70 or 80 percent of the guitar riffs we have split the material it's like Bob wrote two songs for this ep and i wrote two songs for this ep so that's that was kind of different i had to uh, work harder <laughs> <laughs> but, but that was a good thing that was a good thing because I think you can hear it more diversity in the songs and yeah it, it was a new approach so we sat down a lot together Bart and I and we combined more of our own influences into the song so for instance Behead Button is written almost completely by Bart and Stain in the Bloodline is written completely by me you know mm -hmm. so and that's completely a, a new approach for writing the songs normally it was like okay 60-70% was written by Bart and I added a few riffs and now we uh, both have completely written 50% of these EP so that was different and the whole structure of the songs is also a bit more simplified it doesn't mean that the, the music isn't simple but the song structures are a bit simpler and yeah things like that so uh, that was a new approach for us yeah absolutely and I think it, it worked pretty pretty damn good although four songs on the EP it's it's really diverse EP I think I want to thank you very much Jeroen to have sent me the EP I had this great opportunity to sit down, relax, 
tracks. Yeah. Listen to all these four songs over and over again before <laughs> March 23rd. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I love all the songs, they are very, very great. But my question again, or Monger 2? I mean, why more yeah. Monger 2? There was, I can't remember, you had a, a part one? Yeah, 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 we had a part <laughs> one, yes. In the very beginning of our <laughs> career, we have written a song called Warmonger, and I always had a special place in my heart for this song, because uh, it's really, uh, yeah, it's it's a different kind of Easy Grim song. So we written it, I put in a few new riffs, and we modernized the whole song, and I think it's a pretty damn good song. So that's, that's why it's called Warmonger 2. Is. I think it's a song that is way back, from 98 or something like that so yeah and rebuilt the song so that, that was pretty uh, cool to do <laughs> so that's uh, that's why the two added uh, yeah, yeah. the end of the song it's, it's not completely the same song anymore but in basics it's the old 98 version okay the band previous albums were recorded mix and master at sound lodge studio in Lower Saxony, Germany, while all the four new tracks were recorded, mixed and mastered at Kohle Killer Studio, <laughs> where aborted, benighted, etc. All these great bands also do their work. This was back in December of uh, last year. Their studios also in Germany as uh, Sound Lost Studio. Jeroen, you was looking for a fresh, newer sound this time in order to have design to move on to another studio. How was your experience with uh, Christian Cole at uh, this studio? It was absolutely awesome. We've uh, recorded three full length at the Sound Lodge studio, like you said, and also that studio is absolutely awesome, and I recommend that studio to everyone. But like you said, we, we had a different approach in songwriting, and I also wanted a different studio, just to see how it would work. Sometimes to, you have to step back and do something completely different, so uh, and I thought that for this EP that was absolutely the right time to record it in another studio so and we have a lot of contact with the singer of Benighted Julian I think you everybody knows uh, Benighted and uh, the awesome singer yeah. and we, we all really enjoy the or love the sound of Benighted and absolutely the, the sound of Aborted that's like a massive wall of sound and it's still very defined so we've talked to uh, Julian from Benighted how uh, their experience was with the Cola Keller studio and he was like, yeah, you guys should go there and he's brilliant. So, yeah, I talked to uh, Christian Kohler from that studio and he already knew us and he was really happy and delighted uh, to work with us. And so, yeah, we, we talked about the stuff we wanted to do and how we wanted to record at his studio. I mean, we did the drums over there. We did, uh, obviously, all the guitar parts there. And Malus did her vocals there, and at home we recorded the bass, so uh, we had more time for that. Yeah, how was it the experience? Yeah, it, it was a really relaxed atmosphere, and what I really enjoyed was they took really the necessary time to create the perfect sound. Mm -hmm. What you hear on the EP is actually almost the same sound as what we recorded. Yeah, that was uh, pretty new and yeah, that was awesome. But now uh, that everything is already settled and done, what's the difference that you feel? Uh, it's not that I want to compare those studios because those are both great, really great studios. I respect yeah, them both. Absolutely. But yeah. do you see that you really find, I mean, in sound of the band I'm talking about, and that's pure Easy Green this time, um, a much um, better sound compared to your last album? Oh, it's, it's not better. Uh, I already read a review that said that they liked the Sound Lodge sound more. I mean, it's it's just a personal taste. You cannot compare those two studios. And I think the it, it's, it's a bit more massive sounding and a bit more in your face. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's a personal taste. And I, I think he did a great job. And, and, and it was time to do something <laughs> different. I mean, uh, you don't eat spinach every day. <laughs> you have to try something different once in a while. And like I said this was the perfect time to try something different and yeah for me and for the rest of the band it worked out great and Ivo was very pleased with his drum sound and I am really really happy with the guitar sound and we got the opportunity to try a shitload of different amp and amp settings so that was also a lot of fun yeah but who knows perhaps we're going back to the sound loss perhaps we're going back to the cola keller I don't know yet but <laughs> I couldn't be more happier with the sound of the EP you, sure. you already answered my <laughs> next question I was gonna ask that <laughs> if 
of oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. I was going to ask if if we are going to look, uh, you know, to see, you know, we are going to uh, see Easy Green back to Gold Keller Studio. <laughs> yeah, could be, could be. I, yeah, and I mean, it's also a question of time. It has to fit in his schedule. But um, there's a pretty good chance we're going back to that studio. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, talking about a song, a something that I've never asked you, Jeroen, if you don't mind mm -hmm. to bring it up to the fans, what type of instrument are you guys using? <laughs> well, a guitar. <laughs> no, I play a Caparison guitar live. We use the PV6505. And guitars that are recorded at the Kohle Keller studio are recorded through very old Mesa Boogie amplifier. Well, like I said, we tried several amps and the Mesa Boogie was by far the best, the best. For, uh, for the studio. And, uh, it's a really massive sound and it was still uh, very defined. So, Oh, and we are tuned in B, so don't know if anyone <laughs> is interested in that, but we are playing on seven strings or a six string detuned to B. So that's, and uh, actually not much effects between it. Yeah, a little booster, that's, that's uh, everything, a Maxom OD808, that's it actually.
the band work with different record labels or promotion throughout this entire career like cyber music tmr euro rustic cage record and uh, started its collaboration with the french listable record for the last three albums you know what happened this time that the band new ep was released independent is this the is this the end with listable record and when can we expect a new full-length album of the band again uh, first of all that we are releasing this ep independently has nothing to do with our contract with listenable we are still signed by listenable and they're even doing the promotion around this ep although we have released this ep independently yeah, i had a long chat with our record boss and i really wanted to release an ep and not a full length and one of the reasons was that yeah we wanted to also try the new studio and then i talked to the record boss and he said well an ep for a record label he, he could release it but the turnover for an ep is not that big as for a full length so i asked him so can we release it independently so as a do-it-yourself uh, project okay. and he was more than happy than to do and he said yeah guys just do it and we will do the promotion and do it independently and yeah we, we got carte blanche yeah and we didn't want to I, well i didn't want to use a crowdfunding shit thing yeah i hate those things <laughs> I mean, we want to re i mean we as a band want to release and and then i don't want to ask or beg for money for our fans i mean it's our call to release an ep not the call of our fans so we financed it uh, all by ourselves and uh, so far so good i mean uh, it's selling like crazy Jeroen, you are self-responsible for the distribution itself yeah yeah absolutely but listenable is doing promo uh, digital newsletters and things like that <coughs> and arranging interviews but all the uh, promotion and selling is 100 up to us so that's cool yeah absolutely okay before i forget your room i've seen yeah. the beheaded by fear t-shirt with a backside yeah. printed my fear becomes reality are these yeah. t-shirts available at any time of Uh, you know or is this a t-shirt a limited time offered only oh no uh, well as, as long as it doesn't sell out and uh, we, we have them at, at concerts we have we have those shirts at home i mean you can order them through the regular uh, website big cartel shop so yeah limited time offer well no it's it's just like any other uh, t-shirt we have on stock and when it's sold out it's sold out <laughs> and we do we, we perhaps we will do a reprint because the artwork is pretty awesome Yeah, yeah, I like it. Yeah. Uh, but th there we go in there. We go in there about the artwork, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. Okay, the band that <laughs> leaves uh, a lyric video on March 7 for uh, the self-titled song, Beheaded by Fear. And this title track of uh, the new EP is all about violating the trust of a friend in the, the most brutal way you can imagine. Who is responsible for this lyric video? And are you uh, do a film video for this? same uh, title track as well no 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 we did how do you call it uh, a lyric video like you mentioned we won't do and it's you said beheaded by fear it's beheaded by trust but don't worry <laughs> we will, beheaded uh, by not, by trust yeah. yeah 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 no problem but yeah we won't do a, how do you say it a normal video of this this was for promoting the new, the new song it's unleashed upon the world doing a, a normal video for that song again would be a pretty stupid i think i think when we do another video it will be for one of the other songs of the EP but there are no plans yet and the lyric video is done by Scott Root and he's in I think he's from Scotland and he did some things for really big he also did pretty much all the lyric videos for for instance Aborted so he's a pretty cool and good guy and knows how to make a lyric video work I mean he put a lot of effort in all the artwork and making it move and, and I think it's pretty creepy to watch it so yeah. any of your listeners go to YouTube and type in uh, easy grim and beheaded by trust and you know what i'm talking about so enjoy <laughs> <laughs> okay so far i remember a great uh, painted artwork cover for uh, the ferryman zen done by ilaran cantor but uh, for this new ep cover artwork you brought in kirill semenov how and where you contacted Kirill and decided that he will be the one to make the cover artwork for this EP year room. Yeah, well, like I said, because it is now an independent EP, we could do whatever we wanted with the artwork. I just searched the internet for cool paintings because things Aileran did, the hand-painted stuff, I really like. I mean, I like the Photoshop covers, but this 
is when something is hand drawn. It's I mean it's something special, you know. Mm-hmm. And I stumbled upon Defiant Art. That's like a big forum where artists can post uh, artworks. Mm. And I stumbled upon Kirill, and he did some artwork for other bands. And then I saw several works of his, and he's he's painting with car coil and pencil. Mm-hmm. And he, he had several pieces not sold to any band, so I contacted him, and I, I simply wrote him a mail and like, hey dude, I like that piece and that piece and that piece and that piece. Is that still for sale? And yeah, he said yes. So it's that simple. And we bought four hand painted pieces for real, and we got the high resolution uh, paint uh, jobs. And yeah, so it's, it's now exclusively for us. And in the lyric video, you can see all the four pieces we've bought. Yeah. And we already have a huge backdrop of the of the cover. So that's, that was pretty impressive. We hung it up uh, yesterday for the first time and it's like five meters by five meters wide. So you can <laughs> imagine it's pretty impressive to see that. Yeah, so, sure. Um, yeah, that's, that's uh, actually the story behind the artwork. I stumbled upon it. We bought it. <laughs> but at no time you had a feeling to go back to Cantor? Re- yeah, sure. But was also a pricing because it's a self-financed uh, EP. Uh, we ah. couldn't afford Eviland. We had to make uh, choices and yeah, he's just too expensive for us to pay and especially for an EP and Kirill already has those four pieces lying he already painted these four pieces yeah. so we bought it for uh, well, pretty fair <laughs> yes once again I want to go back on Friday which was March 23rd when Easy Green has released their EP Beheaded mm-hmm. by Trust Metropole Metal Fest 2018 first edition took place on the same same night Friday 23rd of March where Easy Green played there as well and did your album release party there but I want to ask you how was this album release party at Metropole Metal Fest and as well last night your second party release at Gouda for the Death Within 2 yeah I'm still having a hangover from <laughs> yesterday <laughs> well Metropole Metal Fest that was Friday yeah that was that was great I mean we played with Dark Tranquility and Equilibrium Asphyx a shitload of other bands Ed was almost sold out I think there were 700 people so that was pretty cool yeah it was amazing I mean uh, the crowd response was way beyond awesome we played two tracks from the EP we played Retraumatized and Warmonger yeah playing new songs for the first time is always <laughs> yeah a bit of a bit tricky but yeah we managed and the response was great and yesterday was also very awesome and I had too much beer so I'm a bit hungover <laughs> <laughs> but are you telling me you, you didn't play Beheaded by Trust no 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 we leave that for another time I mean we, we've just done Retraumatized and Warmonger too that was our choice of uh, to play so uh, yeah that was the same case last night? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We played those two new songs yesterday and uh, or Friday and Saturday, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess the band has already scheduled to play at Groene Engel in Os, Nederland, May 18. Where else will the band be playing throughout the summer of this year around the Netherlands? Ooh, good question. There are still a lot of shows that have to be confirmed, so I cannot tell you everything because there are a lot of shows coming up, but they are not yet confirmed, so I have to keep my mouth shut about that. <laughs> okay, but a- if we go back to Groene Engel in Oz. Are you going to have the same playlist as you did this last weekend? I really don't know. We we often play around with our uh, set list so uh, to keep it also interesting for ourselves. So it could be that we play other songs and in a different order. But we will play, play new songs, that's that's for sure. And well, well, we will play in Belgium in, in like two weeks, I think. And we have some other shows in Belgium and Germany coming up. You're going to be doing some European tours? A European tour is not confirmed yet and uh, I mean perhaps at the end of the year there are some negotiations currently running for a European tour but yeah like I said it's still in a very early stage so but it yeah. could be <laughs> that we are that we will be touring a couple of weeks at the end of this year we're hoping for that okay I'm very sure Jeroen I'm gonna catch you guys on the road this year I don't know if it's still the summer I'll be around in December and uh, for sure I'm gonna catch you guys for what we consider one of my 
most favorite metal festival in Holland, which is yeah. the Eindhoven Metal Meeting. <laughs> uh, awesome. Okay. So if I don't oh. come in the summer, I will be there in December. I will enjoy seeing you guys live again, playing these great new tracks. Do you guys feel good when you play at this venue? Oh, oh yeah, we, we love playing there. You know, for yourself, we are always there. We always visit that festival. And even if we don't have to play, we are always there. And it's like a big metal family reunion yeah. over there. It's Yeah, I cannot describe it. It's it's very overwhelming and great to play there. Uh, but it's also good to yeah to meet you again and other people from all around the world. It's always, yeah, like I said, a big reunion. And, yeah. and the whole atmosphere and all the bands are really, really awesome. I mean, there are a lot of bands that don't play that much in Holland. Some ob obscure bands are playing there. So, yeah, that will be fun. And yeah, we are confirmed for the Eindhoven Metal Meeting. So that's pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> Where was the last time you played there? I think 2014 or 2015, something like that. I think 2015, I think. <laughs> for all the diehard fans, you have to go there. But now, I'm talking about now, tomorrow might be late. Get your hands off one of the CPs. This great masterpiece that was just delivered. The latest work of this great Dutch that treasures is a grim. So you have to get your hand on this EP beheaded by Tross. A great oh, EP. Listen. I must say, I listened to it. The vampire said so. I like it. I love it. It's just awesome. Killer. You must have this great masterpiece in your collection, guys, out there. Okay, Jeroen, once again, I want to thank you very much for making oh, this you. great interview possible. And I want to hand you over the microphone of Madame Messiah Radio for you to invite all your fans, your friends, to buy this great new EP, to buy the older albums as well, and to support the bands and to attend all the shows you have coming up. Oh, wow, well, well, thank you, thank you. It was really a pleasure to, to talk to you again. Congratulations on your 10 years of anniversary for Metal Messiah Radio. Thank you. Yeah, I hope everyone enjoys the interview. Yeah, like I said, bands are the most important people. Whenever you see us anywhere, catch up with us. We love taking a photo or having a beer and having a good time and a laugh and yeah by the EP and hope to see you anywhere around Europe or the world or well and thanks again <laughs> You know what I love when I meet with Easy Green because I feel so good to have a drink with you guys. But you know what I love most about it? It's when I hug my loose. <laughs> uh, okay, I know what you like, man. <laughs> Say hello to all the band members in your please. I will. You know, I am looking forward to meet with you so we can have a couple of hard together. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, will, we will get drunk at the Eindhoven Metal Meeting, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> like I always say, metal. On. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, man. Hi, this is Jeroen of the Dutch band Easy Grim, and I'd like to congratulate Metal Messiah Radio with its 10 years anniversary. Happy anniversary, you guys.
Feel more